So we're ready to start building our timber frame. Just gonna get it a couple of row up here before the scaffold comes because I don't want to do the roof. It's too dangerous going onto the roof without the scaffold. So I'm gonna make use of the time. I'm gonna get this up the scaffold like it saves me climbing in round bars. A couple of things I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need bricks to bond your corners. I'm gonna need trowel. I'm gonna need mud, mortar, cement, whatever you call it. Timber frame wall tie. Stainless steel ring shank nail. This 100 mil VPC is going to go on at this level right around the house to stop rising damp. Building control requires it shite, but anyway, it has to go in. <coughs> Other thing we're going to need to do is this is what's called a timber frame vent. It has to go in a minimum of 1200 at DPC level. It is then going to go in up here again where our fire barrier goes above and below and then up up our peak. So plasters destroy these and plaster them in. So what I do is I get this 32 mil water main and I build this into the wall. This fits inside this so once it's plastered just as the plaster setting I go around and I'll pop I'll pop all these into it. So again, see when you're building corners, especially when you're by yourself, when you're mixing your mud, only mix enough and put enough out for your corners. Say it's three or four buckets for each corner. Tip three or four buckets out of the mixer. Go to your corner and use it. Go back to the mixer. You can turn your mixer up. You can start it, freshen it up. Makes it easier for yourself, especially when you're on your own. Again, when you're putting your mud on, put it on, put your tie on, pull it back, keeps it out of the cavity. your black coat of the gas, sight down the black, look at the black below and sight it and sit it on where the black below is. Give your black a slight push that way, squeezes the joint, gives it a nice full joint. Come to the end of the wall, any mortar that's there lift it, goes hard, looks untidy, so waste the mortar, lift it, put it back on the board. 50 mil cavity all the time in a timber frame. These stability levels are 50 mil. Sticking the cavity. Perfect.
studs aren't always straight, they could be bow on the wall. Put the level on the timber frame first. I built this wall so I know it's perfect. Pretty good. Plump. Good to go. That's why I did this row the other day. No matter how well you clean this, there's always stones or something that stays on it. You brush it, clean it, something always gets under it. Very seldom this block won't move. You always put it down, you come back the next day and it's moved a couple of millimeters. So it's always good to get that on and get it hard. But this has to be stepped in or out a mill or two. It's nothing at this stage. It's more than likely still going to be below ground and it's easier for the plaster to sort that than it is sort a whole wall. So always get a row around it and get it hard and come back the next day when it's hard and your corners will be perfect. There's no flat behind the have to go maximum 600 mil spaced apart 450 vertical these are 400 center studs so we're going to have to put one of these in every 400 millimeters with a maximum 450 center vertical you're going to want to make sure you put plenty of ties in your corners because at the end of the day the hold your wall the hold your block wall you're building to the frame so if the corner is right the wall will be right the less ties you put in, the wall has more chance of moving. See a drain here? The drain's not covered, covered, because this is where they get destroyed. You always want to put the shiny end out. Much neater. Possibly causes bonding issues for plaster, I don't know, but can't keep everybody happy. you're scraping off set at the top of your block it adds up it'll do a joint see if you come back to the board
attack. Concrete says 150 mil. There. That's 225. Sorry, 235. That actually needs bailed up 10 mil. No, I really got it done with that. Just the way the frame's made. So, at this stage, I'm also going to want to check my head height. Yeah, so that needs bailed up about 7 mil. You take 7 mil out of this gradually over the whole portion. Again, it's nothing to do with the block work, it's because of the frame. But, uh, just the standard height for the frame. Still, it's just a hundred mil past your opening. This day is one twenty, giving it a bit of freedom just in case it might be a bit in the cell or a bit in the timber frame window. I'm quite confident that the cell just fought against that. Difficult to build with these blocks. They're never square. This side could be 220. This side could be 222. Sometimes we're seeing this side being 220, this side being 222, this side being 90, and this side being 100 millimeters. They're very, very significant. Which is a nightmare for building.
Normally you wouldn't feel a corner out as much as this, but I just want to get the corner up as high as possible. And the one left. That's our cavity fire barrier. The required at every corner, every joint where the joist is to stop a fire or smoke, whatever it is, progressing upward in the cavity into the next story or progressing around the corner into a different room. So, eventually you keep building. You end up with something like that.
point one head height. And we're on to the last corner. And that's our last corner done. Ready for the slash for cash tomorrow. 